Imagine opening this flyer before the Brexit referendum. You see countries like Turkey supposedly set to join the EU and countries like Iraq which have nothing to do with the EU. You also see Syria highlighted suggesting it might join the EU. How would you feel considering you're a born and bred Brit already worried about immigrant populations? You'll feel scared, but even more so you'll feel convinced to vote for the Leave campaign. All of this gives rise to one question. Was the Brexit vote an emotional one or a rational one? Join us as we dig deeper into the complexities of Brexit. Do you know what's the most powerful motivator in political decisions? Fear. This is one emotion that political parties and campaigns cash on because they know it works. That's why fear was used by both the Leave and Remain campaigns in the context of Brexit. However, in completely different ways. Led by Boris Johnson and Nigel Farage, the Leave campaign tapped into the widespread anxiety over unchecked immigration and the perceived erosion of national sovereignty. The central claim of the Leave campaign was that Britain would be able to take back control of its laws and borders if it left the European Union. In reality, take back control ended up serving as the campaign's slogan. As you can see, the poster reads, Breaking point, the EU has failed us all. The poster's backdrop is covered in a thick mass of people, which suggests a huge amount of immigrants. This picture was used as part of the Leave campaign's plan to incite anti-immigration sentiment. The poster's message is unmistakable and purposefully frightening. By using terms like breaking point, it suggests that unchecked immigration is putting the UK in danger of becoming unsustainable. Playing on anxieties of being overrun by strangers, the image of a lengthy line of migrants strengthens the sense of an impending menace. Naturally, this narrative resonates with many voters, the voters who were anxious about the social and economical effects of immigration. The narrative resonated with many voters who were anxious about the social and economic impacts of immigration. Even more so, the imagery of refugees standing in a long queue at the border stirred up fears about housing, job security, and cultural identity. Was this entirely ethical? No. In fact, it was reported to the police under the charges of inciting racial hatred and violating UK laws. Regardless, the Leave campaign was successful in making people fear the influx of migrants and refugees. But that wasn't it. As the campaign unfolded, the Leave campaign leveraged another potential element to install fear – Turkey's EU accession. The politicians masterfully exploited the concerns over immigration and suggested to people that Turkey's accession to the EU would open floodgates to millions of Turkish immigrants. Painting Turks as inherently prone to violence and criminality was rhetoric that took birth in a calculated move to play on long-standing anxieties and prejudices within Europe. But you see, this fear in citizens of the UK wasn't about foreigners coming into their country only. It was about a perceived loss of control. They started believing that these immigrants were a threat to their sovereignty and the only choice they had was to vote to leave the EU. Moreover, this emotion was instigated to evoke a broader sense of disempowerment in the rapidly changing world. Now, the real question remains, was this play on people's anxieties effective for the Leave campaign? Before we answer that question, there's another thing you need to understand. The Remain campaign also targeted people's anxieties, however, on a different level. Their campaign, led by then Prime Minister David Cameron, warned the citizens about the economic risks that would come with leaving the EU. They instilled fear about market instability, job losses and the drop in the value of the pound. Backing the Remain campaign, many high-profile figures and institutions, including the Banks of England and the IMF, issued warnings about the economic fallout of Brexit. However, from both the fear-based arguments, only one was effective. Statistics from different analyses show how these fears influenced the vote. Post-referendum, the surveys indicated that concerns over immigration were one of the major drivers for many Leave voters. 55% of Leave voters cited the control of immigration as the most important reason for their choice. This was a sentiment echoed in the widespread unease about the EU's open borders policy. Regardless, 
the fear-based arguments of the Remain campaign were not so effective. The only reason for that was because they were perceived as abstract or exaggerated. Many voters were skeptical of expert opinions, so they dismissed them as part of the elite establishment. Economic forecasts were too abstract to have the same visceral effect as the Leave campaign's arguments about immigration and sovereignty. In the end, the politics of Brexit became about choosing between head or heart. Many thought that choosing Leave was an emotional choice, while choosing Remain was rational. Even during the campaign, leaders of Remain like John Major and David Miliband sent out a warning about the supposed dangers of letting emotions rule over reality. One of their famous lines was, Remain must not cede passion or patriotism to the other side. Ironically, the Leave campaign dubbed their opponents Project Fear. What was their main argument? Simply put, the Leave accused the other side of trying to scare people with economic calculations, the ones that didn't feel genuine. Later on, the Remain leaders also admitted that their campaign lacked the emotional appeal and authenticity that the Leave side had. Many researchers, after the referendum, tried to understand why Remain lost. One of them, David Marsh, believed it was because Remain focused too much on expert opinions about the economy and didn't address emotional issues like immigration and sovereignty. Anand Menon added that talking about GDP and EU membership in abstract terms didn't connect with people's everyday lives. Meanwhile, the simple clear messages from the Leave campaign felt more real and convincing to voters. Now, what other emotions shape the decisions of the voters other than fear? Picture this, just after Prime Minister David Cameron's negotiation was done with the EU in February 2016, newspapers like the Daily Mail and The Sun were shouting things like, A great delusion, and Who do you think you were kidding, Mr. Cameron? The media was reflecting a lot of anger and frustration. Why were people so angry? For many, the European Union was seen as holding Britain back. Years of tough economic measures, unfairness, and feeling ignored by politicians had made people very upset. They felt that both their own government and the EU didn't care about their needs or opinions. The EU was seen as a big, bossy institution, making rules without thinking about what the British people wanted. The Leave campaign cashed on this anger. They used it to their advantage with strong messages like, Make Britain great again. For many, voting to leave the EU was more than just a political choice. It was a way to show their anger and frustration. It was a chance to reject a system they believed had let them down. This vote wasn't just about facts and figures, it was about feelings and the desire for change. Another emotion that played a critical role in the Brexit vote was nostalgia. People longed for a past perceived as better and, to be fair, simpler. These voters yearned for the days when Britain was seen as a sovereign and powerful nation, a Britain that was free from external influences. And for some people, it was much stronger, especially the older voters who remembered the pro-EU era with a sense of pride and loss. So the Leave campaign played to their advantage and harnessed this sentiment by invoking images of a Britain restored to its former glory, a Britain that was independent and self-reliant. Adding to this, the emotional appeal to national identity was powerful and instigating as well. The Leave campaign framed the EU as a threat to not only British sovereignty, but also to traditions and cultures. Another one of their main arguments revolved around the idea that EU membership diluted the British identity and that leaving would allow the country to reclaim its unique heritage. And oh boy, was this narrative compelling? It was the main attraction point for those people who felt that British identity had been eroded by decades of EU membership and immigration. Certainly, the media didn't help calm down these sentiments. But before we tell you more about that, click the bell icon below to stay updated with all the interesting analysis about current affairs. Imagine receiving this flyer in your mailbox. It's from the Vote Leave campaign, and it looks pretty simple. There's a title saying, Countries set to join the EU, a map with different shades of grey and some countries in red and salmon colours. It seems straightforward, right? But let's take a closer look. The title says countries are set to join the EU. 
that was not exactly true. The countries listed, like Albania, Macedonia, Montenegro, Serbia, and Turkey, had only applied to join. Applying is not the same as being accepted. Now, here's where it gets tricky. The map shows these countries in red and salmon making them stand out, but they are also countries like Syria and Iraq highlighted in the map. They aren't even applying to join the EU. So why are they colored in? This was to make people feel scared by showing these war-torn countries close to those applying to join. This flyer was meant to make people anxious about new countries joining the EU, especially countries with large Muslim populations. By showing them in different colors and grouping them together, the flyer made them seem like a big, scary other. But by using slightly different colors for Syria and Iraq, the campaign could say they weren't lying outright. So while the map looked like it was just showing facts, it was actually trying to make people feel worried and fearful. Then, social media also played a crucial role. Platforms like Facebook and Twitter became battlegrounds for both campaigns, with emotionally charged posts and memes being widely shared. These platforms allowed for the rapid dissemination of information and misinformation, amplifying emotional responses and reinforcing existing biases. The use of targeted ads, particularly by the Leave campaign, was instrumental in reaching specific demographics with tailored emotional appeals. The repeated exposure to these narratives created a feedback loop, reinforcing existing biases and fears and making them a central part of the Brexit discourse. Psychological theories can also help explain the emotional reasons behind the Brexit vote. For instance, emotions have a big influence on decision-making according to the effect infusion model. Based on this paradigm, whether an individual is experiencing happiness or sadness, they are more likely to be swayed by information that matches their emotional state. Voters were more likely to be influenced by ads that appealed to their emotions if they were feeling fear, anger, or nostalgia towards Brexit. Additionally, the theory of motivated reasoning states that people are motivated to look for evidence to support their preconceived conceptions and sentiments rather than to dismiss information that contradicts them. This theory helps explain why a significant portion of voters ignored the economic arguments made by the Remain campaign. Their current emotional state, whether it was resentment of the government or nostalgia for a time when things were better, motivated them to believe facts that confirmed their want to exit the EU and to disregard professional advice that said differently. The Brexit vote was an emotive as well as a political choice. The electorate's decisions were heavily influenced by feelings of fear, anger and nostalgia. All these feelings were skillfully captured by the Leave campaign and the Remain campaign both. However, as you can see, only one party was successful. So when looking at Brexit, it's important to look at the emotional aspect of it to understand the full picture. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. See you next time.